Hi, I'm Doug Carroll for InsidersGuideToFinance.com with a video on bond pricing versus bond valuation. But wait, I suspect some of you are thinking, aren't price and value two different ways of saying the same thing? Well, they can be, of course. It depends on how authors or speakers are using the words. And especially if value is short for market value, that's price by another name. But oftentimes, in a conversation about the investment merits of a fixed income security, if both words, price and value, come up in the conversation, they would likely convey different meanings. Price would refer to the dollar amount reported on a trade confirmation of a transaction. Or it would be the amount implied by a percent of par quote given by a dealer, the amount at which a bond could currently be bought or sold. Value, on the other hand, is oftentimes short for fair value. In other words, the dollar amount a bond would be worth if the market were properly accounting for all the factors that would impact the investment merits. Issuers' financial circumstances, future interest rate changes, bond liquidity, etc. Unsurprisingly, much research in the fixed income market is driven by the search for missed price securities. That's bonds that are trading rich or cheap, bonds that are trading at prices above their fair value or at prices below their fair value. Naturally, if an investor has money to commit to fixed income investment, they would ideally like to buy something the market seems to be offering at a special price, currently trading cheap or below fair value. And Conversely, if a portfolio manager needs to sell a security to raise cash for any reason, they don't want to sell some security randomly out of their portfolio. They'd like to sell something that presumably the market is currently valuing somewhat excessively. So let's dig into the differences between pricing and valuation. Bond pricing is a relatively straightforward process, at least if one knows the bonds yield to maturity. And while value is a less clear-cut concept, and there are a variety of ways of estimating bonds' fair value, we'll discuss a widely used approach that's thought to uh, properly assess the differences in risk across the life of the bond and how those differences in risk would impact the relative value of the bond's different contractual cash flows. So, how does one price a bond? Well, as indicated before, it's a relatively straightforward process as long as one knows the bond's yield to maturity. A bond's price is the present value of its future contractual cash flows discounted by the yield to maturity expressed as a periodic rate. Those words are captured formulaically on the upper right-hand side of the screen. The left-hand side of the equation is the dollar price. The right-hand side reflects the values in the mathematical operations to calculate the price given the yield. The formula is the means for getting the price of a fixed coupon term security. The numerators on the right-hand side of the equation represent the contractual cash flows. For all of the periods prior to maturity, those cash flows are simply the fixed coupon. So C sub 1 reflects the first due coupon uh, going forward in time, C sub 2 the second due coupon, and so forth. And at maturity, of course, the cash flow due the investor is the last coupon, C sub n, for the nth or final coupon, plus the principal amount. The denominators on the right-hand side are 1 plus i raised to a power, where i reflects the yield to maturity expressed as a periodic rate, so, given the convention for expressing yields to do so on an annual basis, for a semi-annual pay bond, you'd take that yield to maturity and divide by two. And each of the divisors, each of the one plus i's, is raised to a power that reflects the amount of time until the receipt of that contractual cash flow in coupon periods. Lest the discussion be a bit too abstract for people not already familiar with the process, let's calculate the price for a specific bond. Let's assume we're pricing a 10-year 5% coupon semi-annual pay bond currently trading at a yield to maturity of 6%. Assuming $1,000 as the par value, each of the periodic coupons will be $25, 5% times 1,000 divided by 2. 
and the cash flow at maturity, the final coupon plus the principal, would be 1,025. Each of the divisors is 1.03, where the 0.03 is 3% in decimal terms, and that's just the 6% yield to maturity that we assumed the bond was trading at divided by 2. So the way you get the price of a bond is literally by finding the present value of each of the individual cash flows and summing the present value of the cash flows to get the price. The first $25 coupon is divided by 1.03 to the first power. The second $25 coupon is divided by 1.03 to the second power, and so forth and so on, all the way until the cash flow due at maturity, which is the 1,025 divided by 1.03 to the 20th, because of course in 10 years there's 20 semi-annual periods. And by performing the, the operations to get the present value of each of the cash flows and summing them, we'd end up with a price of $925.61. What about valuing a bond? Well, now on the right-hand side of the screen, below the generic formula for calculating the price, given the contractual cash flows and yield to maturity, is the formula for estimating a bond's fair value. Now you'll note there's a great deal of similarity between the two formulas. The numerators on the right-hand side of both formulas are exactly the same. The quanta on the left-hand sides are now different, price being the left-hand side of the top equation, fair value being the, the left-hand side of the lower equation. Even the denominators look somewhat similar. In each case, the divisors are 1 plus i raised to the same powers, and that's because we're discounting the same contractual cash flows over the same time periods. However, there is a distinct difference in the denominators of the two equations. While in both cases it's 1 plus i raised to the same uh, exponents, you'll note the denominators, the i's, in the lower formula are subscripted. c sub 1, the first coupon, is discounted by 1 plus i sub 1 to the first power. c sub 2, the second due coupon, is discounted by 1 plus i sub 2 to the second power. In other words, the interest rates implied by the i's in the two formulas are different. Whereas the I in the pricing formula is the yield to maturity expressed as a periodic rate, the subscripted I's in the fair value formula represent the periodic expressions of the appropriate term spot rates. In other words, when estimating fair value, we want to discount six month cash flows by six month interest rates, one year cash flows by one year interest rates, and 10 year cash flows by 10 year interest rates. Why do we want to use different sets of interest rates when doing pricing versus valuation? One of the reasons for discounting all the cash flows by the same interest rate when pricing a bond is so that all market participants interpret the bond's yield to represent exactly the same price. But then what would be the problem when trying to estimate fair value about discounting all the cash flows by the same interest rate? Well, at a very basic level, if you were always discounting the cash flows by bonds yield to maturity, price and fair value would always be the same number, so you'd never be able to discover mispriced bonds in that fashion. But at a more substantive level, what's questionable when trying to estimate fair value about discounting all the cash flows by exactly the same interest rate? As indicated before, that is the convention for pricing, again, because we want all market participants to interpret the yield to maturity on a bond as representing the same dollar price. So why not do that for fair value? Well, think about the implications about the risk you'd be associating with each of the cash flows if you're discounting each of the cash flows by exactly the same interest rate. Because remember, in the fair value process, we're trying to find the true value of each of the individual cash flows, and by summing the true value of the individual cash flows to get an estimate of the true value of the bond. Well, one of the potential implications of discounting all the cash flows by the same interest rate for valuation purposes anyway, is that implicitly that means we'd be associating exactly the same degree of risk with each of the individual cash flows. And think about the implications of that. 
think about the various risks that need to be reflected in the value of a bond. For instance, credit risk is a big issue for at least bonds of most issuers in the fixed income markets. Can anyone reasonably make the case that the credit risk over the six months of the due date of the first coupon would be the same as the credit risk over the 10 years until the final coupon and principal were due? That is near an impossible case to make. Or what about the inflation risk? Can anyone reasonably make the case the inflation risk over the time until the first due coupon would be the same as the inflation risk over the 10 years to maturity? Clearly, again, an impossible case to make. That's in general when we're going through the process of trying to estimate a bond's fair value. We want to discount each of the individual cash flows by an interest rate that reflects the risk of those individual cash flows. And that is likely to lead to a much better estimate of a bond's fair value than simply discounting all the cash flows by the same interest rate. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can go to our YouTube channel or Facebook page to see other videos on a range of investment related topics. Or you can go to the website, insidersguidetofinance.com. At our website, in addition to the free video shorts, there are a series of modestly priced, in depth training videos with running times of approximately one hour each that go into a number of subjects in greater detail. The website and Facebook page also contain information about open enrollment programs I will be presenting over the next few months and my recently released book, The Insider's Guide to Fixed Income Securities and Markets.